what are some of the health needs of uh, LGBT populations. So broadly, uh, uh, the health needs and health problems faced by LGBTQ people are similar to that of uh, general population, but certain health conditions may occur at a high prevalence. So such a, a condition is uh, we term as uh, health disparities or health inequalities, because this could be these differences in the health conditions prevalence could be because of other issues. For example, it could be the stigma and discrimination faced by uh, trans people, which could actually increase the prevalence of certain health conditions. So what are uh, such uh, health conditions where there are health disparities? So here we, can, we, we will go by uh, identity wise. For example, some of the health issues faced by gay, bisexual and other men who are sex with men uh, are some of these. Not, it's not a comprehensive list, just to give an idea. Again, most of these uh, uh, issues, the high prevalence of some of these issues could be attributed to the structural violence and discrimination faced by sexual and gender minorities. It is not necessarily only because they are yeah, sexual and gender minorities. Uh, for example, both among men who are sex with men and transgender people, there is a high prevalence of uh, HIV. Uh, in the general population, it is only 0.3 percentage, but if you look at uh, gay, bisexual, men who are sex with men, it is anywhere from 2.9 to 7 percentage. And among transgender people, it is about 8 percentage according to one uh, IBBS study from a national AIDS control organization. So this high prevalence is not yes, no, only because of the individual sexual risk behaviors, but it is also because of the structural violence. So what do we mean by that? So let us take the example of uh, transgender uh, women. So many of them, they leave their home at a very early age and thus they don't have access to education and they may, be, they may not be given any other uh, employment opportunities. People may not want to hire them. So many for many such uh, trans women, then uh, one uh, one traditional uh, job is available to them is sex work. So then uh, you can see the connection between a family non-acceptance, societal non-acceptance, and them entering into sex work, which is increasing the risk of HIV. Again, even if they engage in sex work, they may not be able to negotiate condom use with their clients. Uh, again, uh, the they, the sex work may be the only livelihood uh, that is more like what they call the, it's, they may be engaging in survival sex, or they may be getting money only from that. So because of that, they could not be able to negotiate condom use with their clients. And they may also face sexual violence from thugs and the police. So in such situation, they may not be able to again negotiate condom use. So you can see like multiple reasons why there could be high prevalence of HIV among uh, men who have sex with men and transgender women. So that is just to, uh, emphasize the point that uh, the high prevalence of some of these conditions are not inherently uh, because they are uh, sexual and gender minorities. It is because of the societal conditions which actually increase the uh, health risk. So again, uh, the STIs, some of the STIs uh, which are seen uh, in general population are also maybe seen at a higher prevalence among men who are sex with men and uh, transgender women for the same reasons like syphilis, ANL STIs, uh, hepatitis B is also a sexually transmissible infection. So CDC actually rec uh, recommend screening for hepatitis B and vaccination for men who are sex with men and transgender women. So some of the cancers uh, may be uh, uh, occurring at a higher in, uh, incidence, uh, uh, maybe can be seen at a higher prevalence among both uh, men who are sex with men and transgender people. For example, ANL carcinoma, uh, because of uh, if, uh, among people who are practicing uh, receptive uh, anal sex because of high uh, risk of exposure to human papilloma virus during the sexual practices. Again, the last one, uh, we don't have much evidence from India, but uh, uh, studies from Western countries have shown that uh, gay and bisexual men have a, may have a higher prevalence of all diseases, secondly to higher prevalence of smoking and alcohol use. Again, smoking and alcohol use could be a form of coping strategy in relation to the stigma discrimination experiences faced by uh, sexual and gender minorities. So uh, both um, among men who are sex with men and transgender women, 
uh, so as I have told, the stigma discrimination experiences and violent victimization, they contribute to a uh, higher level of depression, suicidal ideation, or attempts, and uh, alcohol use and smoking may be as a coping mechanism to cope up with this psychological distress. And the, some people, they may also internalize the society's negative attitude uh, that uh, and may feel bad about themselves. They may feel bad that why oh, I'm a gay or bisexual or I'm a transgender person. It is primarily because they internalize the negative societal attitude. So this uh, this is called uh, uh, internalized uh, homo negativity in case of gay bisexual men and internalized trans prejudice in case of uh, uh, transgender people. Uh, so uh, again, uh, uh, this concept of uh, uh, the stigma discrimination experiences and uh, societal stigma increasing the risk of uh, mental health condition is called as minority stress theory because LGBT people being a sexual and gender minorities, they may be under a lot of stress in relation to this uh, because of actual or anticipated stigma and discrimination they face from the society. So again, there is very limited literature on, uh, uh, from India on what are the health issues faced by lesbian and bisexual women. But I'm just uh, showing the list uh, which was uh, prepared by Gay and Lesbian Medical Association from USA. Some of, some of these may be also be equally applicable uh, in India. So these are some of the uh, top 10 things they list that uh, the lesbian and bisexual women should discuss with their healthcare providers. Uh, breast cancer screening, uh, again, uh, gynecological cancer, and uh, uh, we need a screening for uh, gynecological cancer, like uh, cervical cancer, especially among uh, lesbian and bisexual women, because they may be under the notion that some of the lesbian women, because they may think that they are not having sex with men, uh, they may be at less risk of exposure to hepatitis, uh, so, uh, sorry, HPV, human papilloma virus, and then the chances of uh, they getting uh, cervical cancer may be less, but actually uh, because uh, um, main, uh, a significant proportion of lesbian women in Western countries and even maybe nowadays in India may be unmarried or getting married at a later stage, uh, there is an exposure to the estrogen, right? So that actually may increase the risk of uh, uh, cervical cancer among uh, lesbian and bisexual women. So there is also a need to uh, screen for the, these cancers, both breast cancer and gynecological cancer uh, among uh, lesbian and bisexual women. Uh, of course, there are guidelines for this uh, for women in general, but uh, uh, lesbian and bisexual women may not uh, think that they are falling under that particular guideline. So unless uh, the, they disclose or unless the healthcare providers ask about the sexual orientation or identity of uh, the women clients they are seeing, we may not be able to offer this uh, screening uh, facility. Uh, again, similar to the discussion on mental health uh, among men who are sex with men and transgender women, here also, because of the minority stress, uh, people, uh, lesbian and bisexual women may be facing high levels of uh, depression, anxiety, and uh, may try to cope up with uh, alcohol and substance abuse. Intimate partner violence can be common across the LGBT people. So we need to also screen and offer uh, supportive uh, counseling for them because often we don't even think of uh, uh, the LGBT clients having a steady partners. We may have our own biases that we may think they may have only casual partners. So we need to ask about uh, the steady partners or lover or husband or wife as the case may be. And we, uh, and, uh, we have to provide uh, counseling and uh, psychological support. Uh, 